What's up guys, this is Tyler here with Savvy Hut Tutorials. Today, as promised, we will be talking about the ARP synth or the fast beat synth that you hear a lot of times in techno, sometimes hip hop rap. I will show you two examples of that. The first of all will be in 80 beats per minute tempo and that will be the hip hop slash rap version of it. The second section here you see is 160 beats per minute and it will be faster, high intensity. If you've been following my weekly tutorials, you will know that we have been talking about synths quite a lot lately. This will be the final synth for a while, so without going too much more into it, I will go ahead and play the final product. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get this tutorial started. As always, the first thing we will do is go up to File and New. Start completely from scratch. The first thing you want to do is make sure your sequencer is popped up. It will probably have kick clap, hat, and snare, which is totally cool. That's what FL Studio puts in there by default. The next thing we'll do is go up here to our Channels tab, left click on that, and go down to where you see the 3X OSC. So if you stay on Add One, scroll over, 3X OSC. That's the instrument we will use to make this effect. Go ahead and left click on that. It will add it to your sequencer here. You see the 3X OSC instrument added in purple. What we will do now is get in here to the 3X OSC instrument and change a couple things and modify a couple effects to make it sound exactly how we want. The first thing we will do is go to each of these oscillators and change the shape to a saw shape. So which is the center shape here. So I'll left click on oscillator one, oscillator two, and oscillator three. The very next thing we will do is go over to our oscillator two here and go to the fine tune section. You'll see my mouse is hovering over it right now. And if you left click and hold that down and drag it up, you will add sense. So now I'm positive three. I'll take that up to about positive 10 cents. Again, up here in the left hand section of your screen, you will see exactly which scent you're on. Again, if you left click, hover. Now you can see it's 12 back down to 10. So keep that at positive 10 cents. And we'll go down to oscillator three now and drag that to the left or drag it down with your mouse. If you hold left click down and we'll bring that to negative 10 cents. That would just add a bit of depth to our instrument here. The next thing I want to do is go to my stereo detune for each of the oscillators here. You'll see on the upper right hand section, there's a little knob that says SD for stereo detune. I will bring each of these up to positive 25 cents. So oscillator one is now positive 25. They each start at zero. Now oscillator two, drag that up to about 25. And oscillator three, I'll do the exact same thing. The next thing I'll do is go down here to my stereo phase randomness and you'll see that by the PR for the phase randomness at the very bottom. Left click on that, hold it down and drag it all the way up to where it goes to 100%. The final thing I'll do on this window is modify the range of which my keys on my keyboard will be hitting. I'll hit Q on my keyboard just to see what this sounds like so far and it might not sound too great so let's just try it. It's alright. So that's me set on C5. What I want to do because I have such a small keyboard in front of me is right click on C4. That's going to raise my entire keyboard note options higher. So now I'll hit the exact same key, which was Q on my keyboard. You can see that brought it up quite a bit. So here's C5 again and C4. Perfect. The next thing I'll do is go up here to the tab where it says INS for instrument properties. Left click on that and make sure your volume section is selected here in the tabs. With the volume tag selected, we'll make sure the delay, pre-delay is all the way down, which it usually automatically is, but just to make sure, let's have it dragged all the way to the left. And I'll take my attack and bring that all the way down as well. So now I've got a straight bar forming here, so it's gonna make a very abrupt attack. The next thing I'll do is go to my sustain section here and bring that level all the way up. So now I've got kind of like a ski slope or a ramp for a skater to chill on. Once you have a symbol that looks very similar to this, you want to take your attack and just bump it up a tiny little bit. Just enough to remove the initial pop that the sound will make if you make the attack too early. 
So it's still almost the exact same shape, just that absolute fraction of a movement back up to delay it a bit. So with that set up like this, I will next go to my cut tab, still within the instrument tab. So now I add volume, now I'm gonna go over to cut. With my cut tab selected, I'll take my hold and drag it all the way down. I'll do the exact same thing for my decay, bring that all the way down. And I'll take the sustain and drag that all the way up. So all the way to the right hand here. The final thing I'll do in this window is just increase the release time a little bit. So we'll bring that to about there, somewhere in that range. Now this knob over here on the right is gonna be your modulation amount. And what that means is it's going to change the instrument sound by how much the cutoff is going to affect it. And for now, all we need to do is bring that down to about here. I'll show you exactly how this affects the instrument. In fact, I'll hit Q on my keyboard now to hear what that sounds like. And I'll bring it up. So it makes it a little bit softer, a little bit more melodic um, if you just take the amount down just a bit here. The next thing I'll do is go into my function tab. So I'll left click that, getting out of the instrument properties and over into my special tools and functions tab. Within this tab, we'll take the echo and bring that up to about 10. And all I do is hover over that where it should say about four right now and just hold my mouse down the left click and drag that up to 10. So now my echo is set to 10. And also within that tab, I'll take my feed, bring that all the way up to the right and I'll take my time and bring that all the way down to the left and finally I'll just make sure my fat mode is selected so get that bad boy up there now I will hit Q on my keyboard just to hear what that sounds like so far what the changes are the next thing we'll do is go up to our FX tab here and just drag that to about five because the first four instruments that FL Studio added automatically will have taken up the first four slots. So now that we've got that set to FX channel five, let's double click so we can see our mixer here. And as you can see, insert five is highlighted, meaning the 3X OSC instrument is going to be affected by any effects we add within this channel. The first thing we will add is the EQ. So left click here where you see the down arrow, make sure you're on select. And we'll go to a fruity panoramic EQ2. So left click on that, you'll see it brings up my EQ here. And whenever you play the instruments, you can get a kind of an idea of where the sound range is going to be when you look here in the EQ. So all I want to do is get rid of some of the bottom notes here so it will not be quite as muddy whenever we use the synth for different sounds and we add some echoes and things like that. It's going to sound a lot cleaner if we just um, take this first section here, right click on it, and we'll change the type to high pass. So now that we've got our purple number one here set to high pass, all I'm going to do is left click and drag that over to the two. So they're pretty much right on top of each other here. It won't sound much different now. In here, I'll actually move it over so you can hear what the difference will be. So all it's really doing is it's taking out some of the bassy sound. We want this instrument be, to be a lot brighter, a lot more profound. So we want to remove anything that's going to make it sound muddy. So with that selected and with that created here, I'll go down to my next channel in my mixer and I'll left click on this. And the next thing I will add is my fruity delay. So let's get fruity delay two here. Left click on that and you'll see it pops up here. And all we want to do with this is kind of add that ping pong effect, which means it'll go from left speaker to right speaker to left speaker to right speaker until it eventually fades out. But each note will do that, so it's gonna kind of build up on each other. That's the reason we wanted to remove a lot of the muddiness. That gets very, very clunky sounding very quickly when you start adding effects like this. So with my fruity delay effect here, I'll switch my mode to ping pong mode. I'll take the pan and bring that all the way down to the bottom here all the way to the left of the knob and we'll hear what that sounds like by hitting Q on our keyboard. Perfect. So the next thing I'll add is a little bit of reverb. So I'll go down to my drop down arrow here, make sure I'm over select and go down to Fruity Reverb 2. Left click on that and you'll see it applies it to your instrument. And all I want to do here is take my high cut, left click and drag that all the way to the right 
and also with my low cut I'll left click and drag that all the way to the right as well you will see it kind of changes to a green color here and finally I'll take my wetness up just a bit so let's left click on that and drag it up to about here then I'll hit Q on my keyboard Perfect. The final thing I'll do is go back in here to my sequencer and I will right click and go to my piano roll. Let me zoom out and I will quickly add the notes that I had at the beginning of this tutorial. All right, now that I've got those notes added to my piano, I will go up to my playlist here. You can see it's blinking on the top section middle of the screen. I'll left click on that and all I do is left click to paste it in here. I'll play that completely by itself. Just make sure it's on pattern here. Click play. Okay, the final thing I did was go up to my sequencer here and I'll add a very quick and easy, simple, nasty little beat to my second pattern. So now that I've got the little drum pattern here, I will left click and just drag that into my track two. So remember I've got pattern two selected here. Drag that in and I will play that all together. Okay. The next thing I need to do is make sure I've got this tempo isolated. You can see I've got it currently on 80 beats per minute. I will select this entire section here, right click and go to create automation clip. So now that that's going to stay at 80 beats per minute, no matter what I do to the rest of the project. Let's unselect that right now. And I will go over to my next section here, select this section, and then drag this up to 160 beats per minute. So right about there. So I'll right click and create an automation clip for that. It's going to put it at the top because there are no other instruments. So I'll grab my paintbrush here and drag that down next to my other track three tempo. So now all I need to do is go into another pattern. I'll go into pattern three, which is completely blank. We will now go into our 3X OSC instrument. So right click on that and I will get into my piano roll. So here we are again to a fresh piano roll on another pattern, which is pattern three. I will add in those trance slash electronic upbeat techno notes now to this piano roll. All right, now that we've got all our notes here in the piano roll, I'll go ahead and click play to hear what that sounds like. One little tweak I do want to make is in my fruity delay section here, I'm going to actually lower the volume just a bit here to reduce how many times it goes left and right on the speakers with that ping pong effect. So it's just gonna fade out much quicker if I do something like that. So now let me go ahead and just click play on this pattern to hear what that sounds like. Okay, perfect. Now let me go ahead and add that to my playlist. So I'll go up here to my flashing playlist, left click on that and I will simply paste in, make sure you're on pattern three, up at the top here on track one. So I'll paste that in twice. The next thing I'll do is quickly make a pattern four and I will add the notes for the kick for that. So here we have it. All it is is a four to floor, kick on every beat, clap on every other beat and hats all the way across. I will add that to my track two section down here and I will play the entire song for you now. All right, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the section below. As I've been saying, I do put together a combination of those comments and questions to create the next tutorial or series of tutorials. These synth series were created because I saw a lot of questions about synths. So if you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really does help out a bunch. And do not forget to subscribe so you can stay in tune with weekly FL Studio tutorial updates. All right, guys, thanks for checking in. Bye. Now let's get this thing started.
drop his music. This week I bring to you a YouTube DJ group called Eminence. Their ever flowing bliss of electronic serenity keeps me coming back track after every glorious